official word from Hikaru is that he that, that this was an accident, that this was a random strike undertaken by the management company. Correct me if I'm wrong. And it appears to me that he's been changing his story consistently on what, who was responsible for this. Um, and it appears to me now that Hikaru has basically changed course and admits that he was either behind this or is not against it and believes the strikes are justified. He approved it. In my opinion, and this, again, please do not take this as any excuse to voice any kind of hate or toxicity. Um, and this is very important to me. Uh, but in my opinion, that is, that is unacceptable. And that is unacceptable uh, as a way of doing business with somebody. Because if Hikaru had a beef specifically with Eric's behavior in the past, or if he had a problem with the channel portraying him in a bad light, 100% legitimate, that should have been addressed as professionals do in either an email or in a communication. And the idea that, that Eric is somehow unwilling to talk or is somehow very unreasonable or acting in bad faith is contrary to both my knowledge of Eric as a person, and I'll, I'll get to the XQC stuff in a second, and I think untrue on its face, and I think nobody's disagreeing there. Now, regarding the XQC stuff and various personal accusations, that should be completely irrelevant to the topic at hand. I've spoken about Eric's comments in the past. I've voiced the basic opinion that provided that one shows sufficient amount of contrition, which he has, and some consequences are acceptable, he suffered them. This should not be under any circumstances taken as a reason to somehow mete out punishment uh, of this kind. And that would be acting in tremendously bad faith. And that is something which could damage his livelihood and that, that would be entirely unacceptable and nobody should stand for that. Now, the thing is, again, if Hikaru believes that Eric is misrepresenting the chess community by you know, drinking on stream or engaging in some sort of excessive behavior. And on a related note, let me say that there is uh, the idea that, uh, that perhaps Eric's community, that the chess bra community has and does act in, in some instances in a manner that is toxic and hateful toward Hikaru um, and chess bay. And that is a legitimate thing to bring up. I, I think even if there are chess bra fans among you, I think that we can all agree that it is legitimate to claim that, um, that a community can improve their collective behavior. And if Hikaru believes that Eric can, uh, is not doing enough about it, legitimate point of discussion, I think Eric would be willing to engage in this. But that needs to be brought up separate from this. And uh, the image that I'm getting is that this is somehow used as kind of a device to get um, Eric to conform in some sense. And that's just not the way that you do business with somebody. So there's two separate issues here. And I think Hikara has legitimate points about communities acting hatefully and in a toxic manner, which is, which is shameful and despicable and reprehensible. That doesn't give somebody the excuse, particularly somebody who stands for growing the game and being merciful and has spoken about that many times in the past uh, to authorize and approve something that could really damage um, the livelihood of somebody who has done a great deal for chess. And both Hikaru and Eric have done a great deal for chess. It's been an issue, as I'm saying, not just now, but has been an issue for a long time. And that is often the case when there are certain people, not people, but certain, just more generally speaking, you know, individuals have power and how they wield it is very important because when you weaponize it, that is a problem. And it seems like it is a problem in this case. And I, I don't, of course, I'm open to different opinions, but it seems like that has been pretty universally understood that this situation has been, uh, the, the copy strike didn't seem like it was in good faith. Let's put it that way. That maybe by the letter of the law, it you can issue a, a copy strike based on that. 
but by the intent, it felt like that wasn't one of those situations where it was necessary, and it kind of jumped an unfortunate amount of steps to get there. So a lot of was lost as it went there. So I just think that you know sometimes there are situations where people need to speak up and in this particular situation what has happened has really gotten out of hand and it's not just a one-off incident and that's I think why it is so heated is because this isn't just you know oh maybe we shouldn't have done this and oh we made a mistake and normally in those occurrences you can just talk about it privately and get over it but it seems that there's a lot going on and so yeah I, I would prefer generally speaking to not have to come online and talk about these things but I know everybody is and it is an important discussion so I, I don't want to act like I back away from important discussions but I tend to have important discussions with people in my life that I'm like close with or that I feel like I can you know make an impact with and yeah I think people in the chat have been correct that when it comes to Twitch when viewership is so important that speaking with people uh, that that is impactful and it can make a difference just as I've stated before my style isn't to do things for the masses uh, I've never been one to you know try to just jump and do things so people will watch or people will listen I, I think you should listen because what I'm saying makes sense not because I'm going out of my way to have you listen to me and yeah I think that's a really important aspect of it is from from my perspective and for me personally is that why not make a YouTube channel <laughs> yeah I, I will I will I will make a YouTube channel I, I know people keep asking Just tell us what to think and you'll think it. Well, that honestly is a problem. And obviously you're joking, but there are a lot of people who will just listen to others. And that's not just in streaming. It's all throughout the world, right? In celebrity culture and influencer culture. Like we just sometimes listen to people where maybe we shouldn't. And you know, maybe we should, but we can disagree with them. And I don't know. A lot of thoughts here. Like nearly everyone goes knight c three or bishop e two. Um, a, f a handful. It's of such a pity that five. this was pre Hikaru streaming days. Like, there's no. This wasn't on video, right? Well, there is a video somewhere. I can't find it these days, but there's a video of him swearing at me at the Gibraltar chess. <laughs> <laughs> it's but such no a, imagine if this had happened on stream. Like, it would be so funny. <laughs> yeah. So I once drew with him in Gibraltar when he, he was on six out of six, and I was half a point back, and. Uh, I was very lucky. I was probably losing the whole game, and I managed to hold it. And then afterwards, he was yeah, very rude to me. That's, <laughs> he said that I was so effing lucky, and that I had no effing understanding. And then he stormed off. And actually, I think there were people watching. Like Topalov was watching and just laughing. And I, <laughs> and then like his dad came to apologize on his behalf, but I never got an apology from him. So that's uh, crazy. And yeah. by the way, Darren, I am an absolute suck. One thing I will say about that. Uh, and this just kind of gives you an insight into Nakamura's personality. So when I played him in that game, and you can find it on the U.S. Chess League homepage. So uh, I was white, and it was some sort of like semi-closed opening. I think I opened with knight f3 on move one. I got a fine position out of the opening, but he outplayed me. And after the game, we were like, you know, chatting, uh, or he sent me a, a tell on ICC, and he was very critical of my play. He was like, dude, why are you playing for a draw? Why are you just trying to draw with me? And it wasn't like in a nice way either. It was like an antagonistic, uh, arrogant Takaru Nakamura way. And I was like, I'm just playing chess. I, you know, you're 2700. 
I'm like 24 or whatever. I'm just playing chess. I wasn't like intentionally trying to draw you or something. I'm doing my best. And, you know, he basically was like kind of mean about the whole thing. And um, I don't know. He, he said something he probably shouldn't have. Uh, but then he annotated the game for his website. And he was like full of praise for my play. Even though I lost the game. Like it might even be still up on his website. But he was saying like, yeah, John played well. You know, it was a, a good game and whatnot. So I thought that was very, like, two-faced of him to say that in the chat. Like, basically tell me I was playing scared or something. And then when he annotates the game, say something completely different uh, when people are reading those comments. So I don't feel bad about mentioning this because, I mean, that's just the way Hikaru is. I don't even know that he thought it was the wrong thing to say. But if I just beat someone, I wouldn't, like, berate them for the way they played. That's kind of stupid. So, not a great personality trait. Okay, let's play another game. It's been a little while since I played a game. 